In this video, we're going to discuss the futures market for the week of Monday, January 15th, 2024 through Monday, Jan Friday, January the 19th of 2024. And we're going to have a look at our prior week. Uh, as always, guys, we're going to be looking at the ES futures, for me specifically, the micro ES futures. And I might have a little bit of a discussion on some of the stock positions that I'm currently sitting in as well. Um, guys, you can find my referral links to various different trading companies uh, and American Express Blue Cash Preferred credit cards in the description box below. If you sign up for an American Express Blue Cash Preferred credit card using my referral link, you get a $75 statement credit along with a whole bunch of other perks that American Express credit cards give you. I recommend American Express Blue Cash Preferred credit card. It's in the description box below. Okay, guys, so our week um, coming in to uh, Monday the 8th of January and then ending on Friday the 12th of January, we can see that we had a prominent green candle that's leaving us near our all-time highs. Uh, in fact, we are sitting above our prior all-time high still that we made on Monday the 3rd of, of January of 2022. Although I would say that the market looks, uh, just from looking at this candle, like it is uh, coming to uh, coming to an end, or in other words, that it's it's losing some steam. Um, but we ended close to the rejection block that we had here that I'm highlighting in the cursor. We can see the open of that of that weekly candle was at 48.17 evens, and we closed this week at 48.11 quarters, so we are close to that. Um, looking purely at our weekly candle, if you were only to look at orders that you could place in or a limit order that you could place in based purely on the limit uh, based purely on the weekly candle, I would be looking at 4824 spot uh, 75. Again, that's 4824 spot 75, which is the 50% retracement point of the uh, weekly candles wick that we just formed. Moving down to the daily chart, guys, we can see that Friday's candle was a doji candle or a spinning top candle uh, that really didn't give us a whole lot of clarity in direction. Thursday's candle similarly didn't give us a lot of clarity. Although again, I want to point your attention to the fact that we've been trading right on our rejection block that we have at uh, 48. Let's see the price level style price label. So you can see that our rejection block there on the daily chart that we formed on Thursday, the 28th of December, 2023. That comes in at 48.34 quarters, and we've been trading in and around that level uh, on Thursday and Friday. If you're looking to take a trade at this point, guys, I would recommend leaning on the short side. I don't think that the market has a whole lot more that it could go higher, although on Sunday and Monday, meaning today and tomorrow's trading day, you could see a green candle to come in and fill in uh, the wick inefficiency. Looking at our daily chart, guys, how I would personally take a trade on the daily chart is I'd take the 50% of the wick inefficiency that we formed on Friday's candle, and I would look at placing in a limit order at 48.24 quarters. Um, or if you want to get more ambitious than that, guys, using ICT standard quarters model, which he's talked about quarters before, taking Friday's wick as an inefficiency a couple of different factors that go in. Number one, I would really lean on taking shorts. I wouldn't lean on taking long. So going in, I know that I want to be placing limit short orders. Then I have to decide, okay, where do I want to put my limit short? Do I want to base it on the weekly candle or do I want to base it on the uh, daily candle? If I'm more interested in getting in the market than getting the best price, I'm probably going down to the daily candle. I'm looking at this wick inefficiency. I've I've put the fib on, and I would put a limit short order right there, 48.24 qu uh, quarters, stop loss somewhere up here. Um, I don't necessarily recommend trading on Sunday. Uh, ICT doesn't recommend trading on Sunday, but I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with just putting in a limit order. All right, guys, let's go down to some of our uh, interday charts here on the MES. And again, just pointing to your attention that we're staying toward a, uh, looking like we're in a trading range. So I will highlight that for you. This is our classic trading range, guys, where we have action in both directions. Whereas you can see before, we were just moving straight up. We had a trading range here uh, 
on the four hour chart, you can clearly see a trading range that we've been trading in. So you've had opportunities to make uh, money both on the long side and on the short side. Um, but at this point, I would be leaning short. One of the basic things that ICT talks about, but Al Brooks talks about as well, is that trading ranges tend to be magnets for price. In other words, price is attracted to trading ranges. Why? Well, the theory behind that is, is that some point in the past, the market has agreed that in and around that certain area, uh, that sort of represents a fair market price. So in addition to all the other models that ICT teaches, I have reason to believe that we're probably coming back lower because we have a trading range down here, uh, somewhere around the ballpark of 4,600 down to 4,575. We have a trading range lower, which should be attracting price. So. Guys, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Uh, every decision that you make is your own. I would recommend at this point uh, focusing on short positions as opposed to long positions. Okay, with that being said, guys, um, I'm going to finish up this video uh, recap probably under 10 minutes here by showing you some of my executions. So we'll go down to the 10-minute chart. Guys, uh, I'll show you my winning trades as well as my losing trades. I don't always win, um, but I win about 70% of the time. Okay, so looking down on our 10-minute chart, we can see that on Friday I took a short at 48.23 halves. I was in some drawdown. It went up to 48.36 halves, and I ended up taking a, a six-point profit at 48.17. Uh, prior to that, guys, I took a... a uh, loss. I shorted at 48.10 halves, covered it back at 48.15, so that was a loss. Prior to that, I had a long at 47.80 quarters, and I covered it at 47.92 halves, so I had a 12 and a quarter point win. This uh, short here that I had um, at 48.23 halves represents the only trade that I took on Friday, um, and I don't know how many trades I'm going to take on Monday, but I will show you that I have a pending order at 48.28 evens. And the reason I have that pending order there is this is a breaker block as well as an old FVG. So we see we have a fair value gap here, uh, a bearish fair value gap that overlaps with a bullish fair value gap. In other words, guys, a balanced price range. So I think that prior to the market moving lower, uh, Sunday Sunday's overnight trading, I would expect to come up somewhere here, somewhere in the ballpark of, of here, and then trade back down during the regular trading hours on Monday. So... Like I said before, guys, I'd be leaning on the short side. I wouldn't be very interested at this point in time in taking longs. I'd be looking to take shorts as we're near uh, all-time highs. Uh, that, that's sort of the basic premise. But all right, guys, finally, I'll point out to you, um, this is a balanced price range right here. You have a bullish fair value gap and a bearish fair value gap, which are overlapping. So we have a balanced price range here. Balanced price ranges uh, are magnets to price, similar to trading ranges. So I think that looking on Sunday, Sunday nights, overnight trading, as well as uh, the pre-market into Monday, I'm expecting an initial move higher, and then we trade back down tomorrow. Okay, guys, I'll show you some of my stock positions now. Um, I know that I mostly talk about futures, but I'll show you some of my stock positions as well. All right. Currently sitting at a $257.03 loss on a Riot, uh, Riot. I initially sold a cash secured put on this product at $14. And unfortunately, I woke up on Thursday and it had plummeted. So uh, I let the option get to assignment and I was assigned 100 shares. So we're currently sitting at an open loss of $257 on Riot. Um, I got that through an options assignment. And then uh, charge point holdings, I'm at a $30 loss. Um, I initially, I think I, I purchased these shares at 218. I sold a cash secured put at 250. Um, I'm probably going to exit this position, to be perfectly honest with you. A couple other positions that I have. Um, I have an uh, options position here on Alicos. Uh, I have a cash secured put at $2.50 expiring on, let's see expiring on the 19th. So this Friday, I have a cash secured put at 250 on Alicos. 
So my cash secured put trading has not been the world's most profitable yet. Uh, I'm mostly a futures trader, uh, but I do like the idea of generating income through cash secured puts. So um, unfortunately, I was assigned I was assigned the shares on Riot. So that was that was unfortunate. I will probably just exit this position for a loss. I will keep you updated. All of my stock positions. Let's take a look. Yeah, Riot, ChargePoint, that's an options contract, Alicos options contract, and ChargePoint, where I own the stock outright. Okay, guys, so that's a review of my futures trading along with my uh, stock trading and my general thoughts on the market coming in to the week of Friday, January the 19th. As always, guys, I encourage you to use my referral links in the description box below. Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, and my biggest one that I personally recommend to you is that American Express uh, Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card. Guys, American Express, in my opinion, it by far offers the most rewards for uh, credit cards. 6% cash back on groceries, 6% on streaming services, 3% uh, on transit, 3% on gasoline, 1% on all of your purchases. Uh, earn a $75 credit by using my referral uh, in the description box below. Um, and finally, guys, if you're interested in Apex Trader Funding, I think they are running a discount right now. You can get discounted uh, simulated trading on Apex Trader Funding Incorporated using my referral in the description box below. Uh, you can also find Top Step Trader Funding. And, guys, you can find a referral link to uh, – I'm partnered with TradingView, which are these beautiful charts that you see in front of you. TradingView, the premier uh, chart package. All right, thank you, guys. And I'll get back to review my trading and the market uh, probably tomorrow or Tuesday. Bye-bye.